Hello guys and welcome to this video to discuss this case. So of course you guys already realized that we have a periapical lesion and not an easy one to describe. Okay, Here there is a recommended reference about fibros, uh, fibrosseous lesions, although this lesion that you guys are seeing is not even a fibrosseous lesion. Okay, Instead it's an odontogenic tumor, right? So you guys should be able to understand about this lesion and to diagnose this lesion. Okay, so feel free to pause the video and try by yourself to diagnose all the conditions of this radiograph. Okay, so let's start without further ado by recognizing that we have a lot of caries. Which are the teeth that uh, are presenting with caries? Well, all of them. Okay, so all of them are presenting with caries and this is leading to periapical alterations. Okay, so let's understand what's going on here. Here we have a occlusal, radio, uh, occlusal caries, okay? although you would be surprised if this has no clinical diagnosis. Okay? So as you guys remember, the clinical diagnosis is the main one, so the ICDAS classification is the main one for occlusal caries. All right? so, but we are seeing that in the dentin, the beginning of the dentin, very close to the enamel, all right, over here, we can see that uh, it's more radiolucent than the rest of the dentin. Okay, and then there is the clinical diagnosis of occlusal caries, right? Of course, you guys realize that we have caries as well here for this second premolar, for the tooth 4-5, and this is probably leading to endo, of course, due to the proximity to the pulp chamber, okay? Uh, probably this caries, not probably, this caries started due to this contact point, and then we need to diagnose this restoration as well, okay? But we are going to do this very soon in this video, all right? Uh, we have periodontal ligament space widening, okay? So let's understand that we, we do have periapical alterations here, okay? Even in the first premolar, we have this as well. And then our very big uh, mixed periapical lesion, okay? So how to describe this lesion? So we have um, a mixed lesion, so we have a well-limited, it's well-limited, of course, radio opaque lesion with a radiolucent halo, okay? The lesion is heterogeneous in the sense that the radio opacity of the lesion, okay? So if we understand that the radio opacity here of the lesion is not the same, okay? So there are different levels of radio opaque densities here, all right? Because of the origin of this lesion. Don't forget to mention that this lesion is superimposing the root, okay? So now we cannot see lamina dura in periodontal ligament space or the rest of the shape of the distal root of this first molar, all right? And then uh, the lesion is, uh, of course, symmetric and round, okay? Don't, for, don't forget this as well, okay? And then we might uh, be having here a little bit of root resorption, but this is also causing the resorption of the lamina dura of the mesial root of the second molar, all right? So this is also happening, okay? So the diagnosis here, uh, these images, uh, these aspects that I'm committing here are suggestive of cementoblastoma, okay? So this is the correct diagnosis here, all right? We can see that we have a recurrent caries of the same tooth leading to a little bit of atrophy of the spoke chamber, okay? We have different levels of atrophy of the different pulp chambers here of this of this radiograph, and then a lot of occlusal and uh, interproximal, and, well, the entire crown has caries here for this for the second molar, all right? Even interproximal distal caries, okay, here, uh, related to, of course, now it's far away from the contact point, but not really, because the third molar is vertically impacted, right? So the third molar is vertically impacted, the third molar also has occlusal caries, but now the third molar uh, uh, is in contact with the CJ of the second molar, and probably this was uh, maybe not in contact, but very close, and of course there was food packing, and then uh, this was most likely the cause of this distal caries. If you guys are wondering if this could be cervical burnout, well, not really, just compared to the other side, okay? So this is not this pattern of cervical burnout of this patient, okay? Even uh, with an image suggesting resorption of the bone at defurcation, so probably the buccal uh, aspect of defurcation would be exposed now, okay? So maybe not fully exposed level 3, 
but we would uh, find most likely a fornication exposure here and then we need to diagnose uh, other things here in this radiograph, right? Uh, for example, the radio opaque restoration, okay? So what we are seeing about the radio opaque alteration? Do we have an overhang? And of course, we have a little bit of overhang. Take a look at this contact point, okay? Take a look at the shape of this uh, mesial surface, okay? So this is, there is a flat shape, it's not in continuation with the enamel below it, okay? So of course that's not adequate, okay? I hope you guys realize this. That's why you need to be careful to understand about this, um, yeah, about the radiographs, okay? We need to diagnose them carefully, okay? Now uh, we have also recurrent carriers as we already commented and the shape is irregular on the occlusal surface but of, co of course this would be a clinical diagnosis, okay? Uh, also, we have bone loss. So, which type of bone loss we have? Well, if you consider that this is the level of the alveolar crest here and here, okay, let me remove this and use a yellow color, for example. So, we have this, the alveolar crest here, the alveolar crest level between the second premolar and the first molar is here, and then, of course, we have a little bit of horizontal bone loss, okay? So, the level of the alveolar crest is decreased a little bit here. And then here we have vertical bone loss, of course, because now it's a bone loss going in the direction of the, uh, of the tooth, so in the direction of the periodontal pocket. So, of course, this is, you could interpret this as being the level of the ovular crest as well, but we know that this is now creating a periodontal bone defect. And that's why we are going to consider this as a vertical bone defect, all right? So if you guys like, please hit the like button and see you guys in the next videos.